Right before we jump into this comparison, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a comparison between the Sony 135 1.8 G Master versus the Sigma 135 1.8 lens. Now, we did do a full review of the Sony version, which is linked down below, and you can also download RAW files from there, as well as you'll be able to download RAW files from both of these lenses in our comparison tests. Now, how did we test it out? Well, both of these lenses were put onto a Sony A7R III. I locked off a tripod to photograph our model Taylor. Now, you'll notice that in the background, there's a lot of bokeh lights, Tetris lights. We put a lot of things back there to help you guys decide which bokeh you like better or which lens you like better in general. So for some of the images, locked off on the tripod to give us the same results all that changed were the lenses. And I also got off the tripod so that I could handhold and shoot both of these lenses to get pretty good portraits of Taylor. Now I used IAF the entire time because this camera offers us IAF and shooting at 1.8 and having IAF is pretty much a godsend. It's awesome. Now speaking of eyes, Taylor has great eyes, and that's one of the reasons we had her sit down in the chair, because she'd be a perfect model to test out focus right on the eyes. Now, right before I jump into comparing these lenses, I do want to let you know that we will be going upstairs to the computer to put the images side by side to help you decide which one is the right one for you. But now let's start with the weight and the feel along with the price. The Sony weighs in at 2.1 pounds and will cost you 1,900 bucks. The Sigma, on the other hand, weighs a little more at 2.5 pounds and will cost you $1,400. That's like 15, 16, 17, it's like $500 more. You could do a lot with $500 more. Is the Sony lens worth $500 more? More on this video. No, that's, that's what we're here to help you figure out. So in terms of feel, we've got smaller ribs right here on the Sony rubber smaller ribs and the focus feels smooth, very smooth when you go ahead and rotate that. On the Sigma side, the ribs, they're spread out a little more if you like ribs that are spread out. Now, it's not as smooth. I've always found that the Sigma lenses are a little tighter to turn, but these aren't zoom lenses. Most of the time you're gonna be on autofocus, so it doesn't really matter much about the rings and how they move, though the Sony one definitely does feel smoother. In terms of size, just look at that. Will you look at that? The Sony is clearly smaller and shorter and lighter. I do have both lens hoods on because I always shoot with lens hoods on, whether I'm indoors, outdoors. Uh, the only time I take them off, is when they go ahead and go in my bag. But you can see the differences in size. Also, on the Sony side, you have these function buttons right here that you can program and set to just about anything you'd like to set them to. You have a couple of switches right here. One is full all the way up to 1.5, as well as manual focus and autofocus. And like the Sigma doesn't have, is this ring right here for changing your aperture. There's two options. You can have it de-clicked or clicked. So right now it's on click, so I can feel the click every place that it's turning. And then the de-click means it's just smoother when you're trying to change aperture when you are shooting video. So that's the Sony lens right there. On the side of the Sigma lens, well, there's not very much. You've got an A opposed to a G because it's an art lens. You've got your manual focus with your autofocus switch, and then you have your limiter right there. So you're getting a little more technology on the Sony side than the Sigma. Now moving on to filter threads, they're both 82 millimeters. Again, my recommendation is you do not put filters or UV filters on these lenses. I don't care if you need to protect it or not. I don't use filters. I guess if you're in a place where there's a lot of 
possibilities for dust and dirt and things, maybe a filter would come in handy. But for the most part, I don't use filters unless it's an ND filter or a circular polarizer because you need it for the particular situation that you're in. There is no IS in this lens. There's no IS in this lens. So neither of these lens offer you ISIS when you put it together, but I bring this up because we know the cameras have image stabilization and the fact that I shot the portraits at 1 80th of a second at 1.8 and they're 135 millimeters, still nice and sharp, still nice and focused, even without having ISIS in both of these lenses. If you're wondering, the Sony goes from f1.8 all the way up to f22, where the Sigma goes from 1.8 up to f16. Is that a big deal? In my book, not really a big deal at all, but there are nine blades in the Sigma and 11 blades in the Sony. Now where this is perceived, where you can see the difference is this image that was shot at F8 with both. You can see that the Sony Bokeh ball is a little smoother on the round side, whereas the one with the nine blades, which is the Sigma, you can see it's a little more herky-jerky. Now keep in mind, we are zoomed all the way in, but then when you get to 1.8 with both lenses, it's almost like you can't really tell a difference. And we all know that my feelings about bokeh are, yeah, I don't really, I don't care. Both of these lenses are gonna give you tremendous bokeh. I don't think anybody is a bokeh wizard and knows the difference between good bokeh versus bad bokeh. Oh, good bokeh, bad bokeh. Shut up with your bokeh and go shoot pictures. Get your composition, get your exposure, capture the moment. Nobody's gonna know the difference between good bokeh and bad bokeh. It's like the Wicked Witch of the East and the Wicked Witch of the West. Which one was good? I don't know. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Let me jump in here real quick and say if you're looking to pick up either of these lenses, or any lenses for that matter, head on over to adorama.com fro because when you use that link, it helps us to continue to make the videos that we continue to make. Now let's jump back into the video. So which one focuses faster? Well, we set up the Atomos to help you see what our viewfinder saw to see which one focused better. I definitely think that the Sony is much faster. When you go from the subject to the background, back to the subject, back to the background, you can see the difference in focus speed. I even felt it when I was shooting the portraits myself. I said, Stephen, it feels like and looks like the Sony just acquires much faster. It acquires faster and it can move to the background and back to the subject faster than the Sigma. The Sigma going from the subject to the background definitely felt like it moved a little slower. Is that because it doesn't have the four linear motors that the Sony has? Is it a big deal if you're shooting portraits? Can you wait that extra split second because it's really not that big of a deal? And don't forget, you're saving 500 bucks on the Sigma side. Personally, I rather have the one that's gonna focus faster and acquire faster because that's the type of shooting that I do. But again, weigh the 500 bucks and then you have to decide. How close can you get to your subject, AKA close focusing? Well, with the Sony, you can get to 2.3 feet, whereas the Sigma can only go close focus to 2.9 feet, AKA a six inch difference, which I heard makes all the difference in the world. I don't know much about that, but I've been told in the past that six inches is definitely a big deal, but it is nicer that you can get closer to your subject fill your frame and still get focused. Now, the one thing I noticed is that the IAF, when I got closer, didn't pick up, so I just had to move the focusing point manually, AKA the old fashioned way, to put it right on Taylor's eye and then get the focus right there, and it nailed it. For some reason, you guys like seeing brick wall tests to help to see which lens has more vignetting. Honestly, they were both about the same and right about 2.8 and beyond, the vignetting is pretty much gone. These are 135 millimeter lenses, so you won't see as much vignetting with them. And finally, down here, before we go upstairs, we've got the wind tunnel test and the sniff test. I'm going to take a step back and blow as hard as I can. In three, two, one, There go my notes. Uh, they both are sturdy. They're like the wall, the north wall that used to be standing in Game of Thrones, but now I want to sniff them. 
Okay. Okay, I got this. This one smells like a Lannister, because it always pays its debts and they have a lot more money. And this one smells like a Stark. They live in the north and they smell, because they live in the north, like Canada. Well, they don't smell in Canada. But anyway, that's the sniff test, the wind tunnel test. Let's take this upstairs to compare the photos side by side, so then I can then determine or help you decide which one is right for you. As a quick reminder, you can download the sample raw files I'm about to show, as well as other sample raw files at the link on the screen or down below. And now let's compare. So in this setup, we've got the G Master, which is a Sony lens on the left, and we've got the Sigma lens on the right. Now to refresh your memory, we're locked off shooting the exact same settings on a tripod. The only thing that changed was the lens and all the settings are the same and these are not edited. These are straight out of the camera. Now, right off the bat, visually, the Sigma just looks perceivably smoother. The skin looks smoother for some reason. I don't know if that's good, I don't know if that's bad, it's just what I see, whereas on the, the Sony side, you can see that it's super duper sharp, and in terms of brightness, they are pretty similar. In this case, the, the Sigma looks slightly brighter, by like a quarter of a stop, we kind of tested it out and we can only think that the T-stops are slightly different between both of the lenses and how much light they're letting in. Now, we've seen this with other lenses in the past. It is what it is and at the end of the day, they both are fairly similar. Why don't we zoom in on that? Boom, super sharp. Look at the eyes here, look at the eyes here. It, the, the color's slightly different through both of them the Sigma does look pretty darn pleasing, to be honest with you. Um, a little smoother and softer. Whereas the Sony, you can, you know, you'll just have to dial down the clarity just a little bit. All right, let's go to the next two, which was the close focusing test. We're gonna put these side by side. And you can see right off the rip, again, none of these are color corrected. They are just straight out of the camera. You can see how much more the, the, the Sony fills the frame versus the Sigma. Zoom in real quick, see the difference. That eye's not in focus, but this eye's the one that we got in focus. But look how much bigger it is on the Sony side. As a reminder, this is because of that extra six inches where in this case, it may come in handy. Moving on, we've got a couple more examples. We have this one right here and this one right here. Let's put these side by side. We have the G Master Sony on the left and we've got the Sigma on the right. Now I stepped out of the room to get these pictures because 135 is super long. If you don't have the space, it may not be the right one for you. If you're just shooting in a regular room, like a 10 by 10, 10 foot by 10 foot room, you're not getting full body pictures. I had to step out of the, the studio to sit in the hallway area, the entranceway, to get to fill the frame fully like this. These are both edited but they have the same exact edits done to both. Um, it, it's indecipherable kind of between both of these. Um, I, again, you can see the smoothness on the Sony side, sorry, smoothness on the Sigma side. The Sony looks great as well. The colors in the background is one more vibrant than the other. In this case, it looks like, again, it's a little brighter on the Sigma side, but that's not something we can't correct for by just going up a quarter of a stop or a little bit in the raw file on the Sony. Moving on, we've got these two right here. This time we've got the Sigma is on the left and the Sony is on the right and the white balances are locked in, but it looks like there's more of a magenta tone, magenta color on the Sony side where the Sigma one is coming up ever so slightly a little more green. Now, this was all handheld. Same exact exposure, handheld. We're gonna zoom in on the eyeballs right here. Boom, I, I couldn't tell you which one was clearer or sharper. They both look absolutely fantastic to me. Uh, that's a good sign for a, a lens that's $500 less. I will say that in our tests with other Sigma lenses, we've seen this time and time again, that the Sigmas are vibrant, colorful, and extremely sharp. And in other people's tests, they've talked about how this Sony lens is one of the sharpest lenses they've ever seen. Now, 
I guess you'd rather have a sharper lens than a not as sharp lens because you could always dumb down sharpening just like you don't want to shoot JPEG where RAW you could always dumb down but JPEG you can't dumb up. These both look really good. The eyes both look fantastic. I just have two more here. They're not going to be comparisons but we've got this one which was done with the Sigma. Just wanted to zoom in on the eyeball and show you how incredibly sharp that one looks. The tones, I really love the colors. I really, well, I kind of bumped them up just a little bit just to, just to show you the vibrance. I love what I got out of that. Since we're talking about editing photos, would you like to speed up your workflow or have a great starting point for your RAW files? Well, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com presets. And over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you like them for a limited amount of time, they're on sale for 40% off. And then the last one right here is this Sony one with the Sony 135 and it's beautiful, contrasty, colorful, sharp, and like I said downstairs, it is faster when it comes to focusing. So at the end of the day, you can't go wrong with either one. Of course, if you wanna save 500 bucks, can I recommend the Sigma? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's sharp, it's colorful, it's vibrant. It's not as fast focusing, it's a little heavier, but it did a great job side by side against the Sony. Personally, I'm going with the Sony. It's lighter, I can get closer uh, for close focusing. I don't think there's that much of a difference for me and as a full-time professional that makes money off of photography and making these videos, I can afford to spend the extra 500 bucks. But if you're just starting out, that 500 bucks is gonna go a long way to helping you buy another lens so that you can be more dangerous with your photography. Save the 500 bucks. If you're flipping a coin and you just wanna get portraits with a 135, I'm probably gonna tell you to go with the Sigma. If you can afford the Sony and you want the faster focusing, then go with the Sony. So what do you guys think? Leave me some comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Well, they ice, is and is. It's ISIS. I get it. <laughs>